Hey guys, welcome back. It's Rick here. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you everything that broke on our Airstream over the last year while traveling full time on the road. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. Man, it's a beautiful morning. Uh, birds are out chirping. Hopefully they're not too distracting. Uh, but as I mentioned in today's intro, I wanted to talk with you about everything that broke on our Airstream during this past year of full-time travel. So uh, again, this is just to provide some insights uh, to you if you're considering full-time travel. It's not to be indicative of the quality either good or bad of Airstream. It's just uh, sharing our experiences of what we had to repair while we were traveling full time uh, the, over the past year. So to get started, what I did was I reflected back on the last year of everything that we had to repair. And some of these were just general maintenance repairs and others were uh, a little bit uh, more involved uh, major repairs. So what I did was I broke down uh, everything into two categories, minor repairs and um, major repairs. Uh, some of these again are just routine maintenance, just like what you have to do on your house. Uh, things are gonna break and you're gonna have to repair these items uh, when those uh, breaks occur. Uh, but again, with any piece of equipment, uh, hopefully you have a scheduled maintenance uh, program and you don't have to worry about too much unscheduled maintenance that you have to do where things break. Uh, but uh, again, if you use anything for a year, it's gonna have some wear and tear and things are gonna happen. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So on my list of minor repairs, uh, some of these are relatively simple repairs and, and fixes that any, any Airstream owner should be able to do on their own. And that is uh, first and foremost on the list are just cabinet latches. You know, over the course of a year when you're using your Airstream full time, those uh, plastic latches that, uh, you know, hold your pantry doors closed, your kitchen doors closed, and other, other cabinets closed, those things are susceptible to, to breaking. They're a relatively inexpensive plastic latch. Uh, we keep several on hand and we repair those as needed. In addition, traveling over 18,000 miles, we had uh, multiple um, rivets that popped on the interior of our Airstream. Again, another simple repair. We've got a rivet gun, we've got assorted rivets. Whenever we would see one of those rivets that had popped, uh, it's just a really quick fix to go ahead and replace that and put another um, rivet in its place and, and make that repair. Uh, the third thing, again, this was a minor repair. One of the awning hooks on our um, driver side awning uh, just came up missing. It, it must have just vibrated loose. And, uh, and when we arrived at one of our campsites, that awning hook was missing. Uh, so I had to order a part from um, Woodland Airstream, got it within a few days, uh, and re reinstalled that part. That was, uh, again, another simple fix. Uh, made sure that I used some Loctite on the, um, the screw. And, and made sure that that uh, didn't come loose again. Uh, other minor repairs in the kitchen, we had some of the uh, grommets that go on the stove top grate. They, they just wear out and came up missing. I replaced those, that was a simple fix. Uh, one of the stove burners, uh, we replaced that because it was missing a clip, which uh, actually was a safety hazard uh, you know, because it could cause a propane leak. Also, going back to our awnings, on our rear awning, uh, some of the rubber tips uh, that uh, hold the support arms had just worn out, uh, replaced those. Again, you know, day-to-day -day use and wear and tear, those rubber tips are just gonna wear out over time. Uh, moving on, our uh, door on the Airstream, on the screen, uh, the weather stripping, had deteriorated over time. And, you know, this is a 2017 Airstream and that uh, uh, foam uh, weather stripping just wasn't gonna last much longer. It's five, six years old. It already been wore down, compressed and everything. So uh, bought some replacement uh, weather stripping and uh, installed that. Again, a relatively simple task. Um, another repair we had to make, again, minor repair, was the shower door sweep. Uh, had torn and we had to replace that. Um, again, just ordering that part, getting that in from Woodland Airstream online parts store, simple fix. 
Again, we just wanted to prevent any type of water damage that could occur with water running out of the shower. Simple DIY fix. Staying in the bathroom area, we also had to replace the bathroom uh, doorknob. Uh, that, I um, just the mechanism had just worn out over time and uh, we ordered that. Again, a, a relatively simple repair. Uh, just a screwdriver and uh, five minutes and you can get that repaired without any problems. So moving to the outside was our power jack switch. Uh, the switch that raises the jack up and down uh, that had went out on us. Uh, again, like I said, this um, Airstream is five, six years old. So it was just uh, worn out. Uh, ordered that through e-trailer, got that part in. Uh, it was relatively easy to replace that, but um, just something when you're using your your power jack on the front of your Airstream, just be aware that those switches aren't going to last forever, and uh, that was a relatively simple fix as well. The next thing was our outdoor shower. Now we've never used our outdoor shower, uh, but it had a leak uh, around the head. Well, no, it wasn't around the head. It was around the um, the knobs where you turn on the hot and cold water. Uh, you know, those those fixtures are plastic, uh, not overly durable. I don't know if a previous owner didn't properly winterize it, but it had apparently developed some kind of a crack or leak in there. Uh, so I went ahead and just ordered a replacement uh, outdoor shower, uh, installed that, um, and, and got that taken care of as well. Again, we don't use the outdoor shower. Uh, you know, in most campgrounds, we just hook up a uh, Y connector to the... Uh, to the water there at the campground and I'll use a hose if I need to uh, wash anything down outside. So, but it's again, something that I, I didn't want to just leave unrepaired. So we went ahead and got the outdoor shower fixed. The next thing on my list was the kitchen vent. Uh, you may be able to see it behind me here, uh, back over here somewhere. Again, it's a, a plastic component. It's, it's exposed to UV rays, you know, 24 seven, 365 days out of the year. I noticed it was starting to crack and the little tabs that you use to secure the flap uh, when you're traveling had broken off so I had no way of securing that. Again, we went to a local uh, Airstream uh, dealership to their parts department. They actually had one on, on hand on stock and uh, was able to make that repair of that kitchen vent uh, relatively simply uh, for just a few dollars. Uh, another minor repair. And I guess this isn't really a repair, this was a replacement, but uh, during this past year, we replaced the batteries on our Airstream. Uh, they were actually um, five years old and they, are, they were six volt lead acid, flooded lead acid batteries. Uh, and I would tell you, you know, a lot of people are on the lithium battery uh, kick right now and, you know, we've considered that, but at the time it just wasn't uh, uh, you know, an expenditure that we wanted to make and the return on investment based on the type of camping that we do where we're typically hooked up to electric, it just didn't really make financial sense for us to, to invest in lithium batteries at this time. So I ended up having to replace our RV batteries, but if I can get five years out of um, you know standard RV batteries with just good maintenance, uh, I'll go ahead and take that at about a fifth of the cost of replacing with uh, lithium batteries and then all of the other associated upgrades you'd have to make with that as well. And then the last minor repair, and again, this isn't, wasn't necessarily a repair, it's kind of a replacement, but we ended up having to replace our surge guard. And that's because where we were camping at one time, they had a low voltage issue at the campground. It was, uh, it was in uh, central Texas, hot. Everybody's running the air conditioners. Uh, probably putting more draw on the power grid than what the campground could support. Uh, so we started getting into a low voltage situation. When you start getting into a low voltage situation, uh, you know, your, your rig's gonna still try to pull 30 amps if you're running your air conditioner or anything else that's electric. And we ended up burning up the plug on the uh, surge guard and it didn't cause any damage to the Airstream. Uh, but it, it was probably due to a poor connection at the pedestal because uh, this pedestal was, was very old and, uh, and probably wasn't getting a good connection as well as a low voltage situation. So you got a poor connection, low voltage. 
uh, you know, and you're still trying to draw 30 amps on our rig, uh, just created an overheating situation, which then ended up burning up one of the plugs on our surge guard. Again, the fix for that was to go to a local uh, camping dealership and purchase a new surge guard, which we did, uh, but uh, just something that we had to repair or replace uh, during that first year of travel. So that really kind of sums up a lot of the minor repairs that we had to do. Nothing, I don't think was anything out of the ordinary. A lot of these were just some general maintenance, you know, rivets, latches, weather stripping, um, and mechanical parts, doorknobs and such that over time just wear out uh, and, and what have you, and or exposed to the elements. You know, batteries aren't gonna last forever, uh, plastic, you know, components aren't gonna last forever. Uh, so these were relatively minor repairs that we were able to get fixed without too many problems. But moving on to some of our major repairs. So let me scroll on my list here to what some of the other major repairs were. And, you know, your definition of a major repair may be different from mine. So I'll go and kind of, which were easy to repair to a little bit more difficult. And the first, uh, major repair that we had to make was uh, replacing our water pump. Again, these components aren't going to last forever. They're mechanical parts. Um, you know, I, I put together a video and I can put a, provide a link to that of how we replaced our water pump. Relatively simple uh, repair, but it was something that if you don't carry that spare part with you, it's going to potentially derail your camping trip and uh, just cause some difficulties in what you're trying to accomplish when you're out traveling. But uh, water pump, that was one of the first major components that we had to replace. Uh, and I do carry a spare one on hand, uh, inexpensive relatively, 60, $70 I think is what we pay for it. We keep one on hand, they're not all that large, but uh, a good spare part to keep on hand. And I do have a video of what are my, um, you know, crit most critical spare parts that I keep on hand. So if you haven't checked that video out, uh, you know, I'll provide a link up here or over here, wherever it goes, and you can check that out as well. The next major repair uh, that I had to conduct was uh, repairing our deadbolt on our door of our Airstream. And that was because of my fault. I was doing some general maintenance, uh, lubricating hinges and the locks and everything. And when I uh, was lubricating the lock, I had extended the deadbolt but failed to retract it uh, before I tried to close the door. After I tried to close the door, I ended up bending the deadbolt carrier inside the door, which required me then to drill out a couple rivets, replace that deadbolt. Uh, well, not replace it, but uh, repair the deadbolt uh, carriage. Uh, again, I've got a video for that. <laughs> and you, you're going to pick up a trend here as all these uh, repairs you know, this is life on the road. This is what it's like to live on the road full time. And uh, I just want to share my experiences with you. So hopefully you can learn, you know, from my experiences. And also, if you ever have to make these repairs, uh, you know, you've got something you can reference. Okay, moving on to the next uh, major repair. And uh, this one here was one that uh, was a, a bit more challenging. And that was when our air conditioner went out. And this was in the month of July. We were on our way to the um, International Airstream Rally up in Freiburg, Maine. And our um, air conditioner just stopped working. We got an uh, E7 code, which basically meant no uh, power to the air conditioning unit. And I was able to troubleshoot that and identify that it was a capacitor for the um, air conditioner that had went bad. Unfortunately, at that time, this is during the supply chain shortage, uh, nobody had any capacitors on hand. I couldn't find one, I couldn't order one, Dometic didn't have any on stock. Uh, so what I ended up having to do was I went to several uh, RV repair shops and uh, dealerships, and I was fortunate enough that they had a salvage air conditioner uh, back in their junk pile, and I was able to harvest off a capacitor. It was the exact one I needed. I've installed it and uh, was able to get my air conditioner up and running. And it's been running, probably going on for a good uh, 10, 11 months now with no problems. Now, with that said, I went ahead and ordered an additional capacitor. I keep that on hand um, and highly recommend that uh, if you feel comfortable getting on your roof and if you get, feel comfortable working with electronics, keep a capacitor, um, a spare capacitor on hand. It'll, it'll be something that you can uh, replace easily 
and may uh, save you thousands of dollars uh, because a lot of these um, RV technicians will just opt to try to replace your air conditioner as opposed to repairing it. So that was the uh, next major repair that we had and that was definitely going to be a showstopper in the month of July not having any air conditioner uh, and, and I was glad I was able to get that repaired. Uh, the next uh, major repair was I had a small leak develop on our fresh water tank uh, and this is around the fitting where the PEX tubing screws in and uh, goes to your water pump uh, just from vibration traveling down the road there started to be a small leak just a small drip I was able to get some uh, JB weld I don't remember the type it was but it is the type that works uh, in water and I was able to uh, apply that to that joint and uh, stop that leak. Now, eventually, uh, over time, that's that's not a long-term fix, but uh, you know, eventually we'll end up probably replacing that fresh water tank. But it was a repair that I needed to make while I was on the road, uh, without having to take the uh, rig into the shop and have them drop those uh, belly pans and then replace that um, fresh water tank. And then probably the last of our major repairs that we had to make uh, was a roof leak. And this was probably the most frustrating of all the repairs that I had uh, during the course of our first year of full-time travel. And that was because it just took months for me to try to locate where that leak was coming. Anytime it would rain, I would try to identify the location of that leak and try to eliminate uh, that, that point uh, where I thought the leak was coming from. It took, uh, like I said, three, four months before I uh, eventually found where that leak was coming from. And once I identified where it was coming from, and it was coming from uh, the uh, black tank vent on the roof and the gray tank vent on the roof. And I was able to make those repairs and uh, haven't had a leak since. But again, uh, that was something that was uh, unexpected it wasn't necessarily that the part failed, in my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. I think it was just an improper installation at the factory that uh, eventually uh, evolved into a leak in the roof. Uh, and again, I've got a video for that. Uh, if you have a similar situation where you have a leak, especially uh, dripping into the uh, bathroom area. But again, you know, this isn't to, you know, throw shade on Airstream or or anything like that. This is just to share with you the experiences that we had during our uh, past year of full-time travel in our Airstream. Again, a lot of minor repairs, a few major repairs, but uh, these were all repairs that I was able to do on my own. Now, I'm not an RV technician. Uh, that's not my trade. Uh, I am, I think, consider myself relatively handy. I've been able to do all of these repairs myself. Haven't had to take uh, the rig into any type of dealership, haven't had to call any RV uh, repair technician to come out and do any of these repairs. Uh, so I just would share that with you that if you're considering full-time travel, just know that there are going to be repairs you're going to have to make, uh, but the majority of those repairs are going to be something that you should be able to do on your own with just a, a few tools, a little bit of experience. And I tell you, YouTube is a great resource. You can you can learn a lot by watching YouTube videos, learning from others' experiences, um, and uh, and you too should be able to make uh, make all of these repairs, you know, relatively easy. So, guys, that's really going to do it for today's video. Hopefully, this was uh, informational for you, especially if you're considering uh, hitting the road full time in your airstream. Uh, I wouldn't take this as any type of discouragement, but just more as encouragement, knowing that. You can, uh, you can do it uh, with just a little bit of uh, expectation management, knowing that there are gonna be things that are gonna break. And uh, if this uh, video is useful for you, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to our channel. We'd love to have you follow along. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave those in the comment section below. And if we don't hear from you, hopefully we'll see you down the road.